they often look cute and cuddly. But don't let the bulls of the PBR fool you. They always come with a warning label. Handle with care. Two-time PBR world champ, Jose Vitor Leme, has made bull riding seem quite simple early this season. Different year, same Leme. But in recent weeks, his dominance seems to be running astray. Our world number one now having to be carried. This week, the world's number one ranked cowboy is sidelined with injury, leaving the door wide open for cowboys chasing down this year's gold buckle. Kaiki can do no wrong at the moment. Andrew Alvarez in back-to-back -back weeks. Dalton Castle is your winner. The race for the 2023 PBR World title heats up as the PBR World Finals is now on the horizon. It's all about getting a start on this bull. He wants to leave out of here so quick that a lot of times he fouls himself. He's clean here. An eight-second slice of not only how good Joel can be, but also riding solo. Two greats just went head to head, and Vienna comes out the victor. Well, this is what we started off talking about. Who's going to step up? Who's going to rise to the occasion? Well, right now, this JRV, man, he's got the reigning world champ, a bull that's roughed him up before. Puts that out of his mind, just goes out and makes a great ride. Consider the judges impressed. 91 and a half. That'll increase the smile on Joao's face. Hey, this is this is serious right yeah, here. Yeah, he's Craig. on the clock. And there's no stopping it now. He has got to get back down in there and get busy. Yeah, this is very rare, rarer than a blue moon when you see a rider disqualified based this on ain't time. This going to happen, man. And yeah, there's no way. He's just should they cut his losses, and that's it. It is a confirmed disqualification based on time, and that becomes, I would think, a very hard pill to swallow. Well, it's got to. I mean, these we talked at the top how Castle has taken advantage of these situations. There is such a huge opportunity here with the with the big time points that are available and the great bulls. You're going to have a chance to win when that gate opens. Dos Santos is going to have a little something to think about before his next bull ride. As well, we got to see his last out last weekend, and now Kate is with his contractor, Laramie Wilson. And Wupa could have bucked for years to come, guys, but Laramie. You and Lupa's team decided to retire him at the top of his game. Why was it the right time? Well, to, he has nothing left to prove to me. He, he's done everything that we've ever expected of him. And not only what we expected, but exceeded it uh, way, way farther than we could ever dream. And I, I didn't want him to be an old worn out bull. I wanted him to go out on top. Jose had ridden him four times. We got him on the ground once. I didn't see a better time to do it. Uh, his calves look phenomenal, and we're really looking forward to the, the offspring out of him. And we just thought it was the right time. We, we're going to turn him out on cows in a few weeks, and uh, hopefully the next generation makes him look even better. And what an incredible bull and the legacy, Laramie. We appreciate the time. <laughs> Thank you. Craig. Now in... Two men who have been successful at the office as Denner's balance pays off and Smokestack adds to the drama of the dance. Well, that's what any great athlete does, right? They take something really, really difficult and they make it look like anybody at home watching could do it. And that's what Denner Barbosa just did. He took a great bull and just made it look like, yeah, this is, this is just what I do. Well, the judges were definitely on board. 92 points, and Barbosa's now in front. And that rider score, way up over top of that bull. But you look at the control right here. I mean, just never a bobble. And that bull is doing everything you would look for in what a great bucking bull should do. He's spinning, he's kicking, the intensity's there. 
And Barbosa just handled it with such control. That was an awesome ride. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that Ryder score 47 and a half. In fact, his ROB, Ryder over bull difference, was 3.0. And that's something that in past seasons we've made a very big deal of. And that's not something easy to do away from your hand. Uh, this is a new bull really looking forward to seeing him. Oh, bad landing for Petri as he comes down on the head, shoulders, and neck all at once. Well, a really good bull. I talked about him being a new bull. He's a new bull to the bucking battle. He's been rodeoing a lot. Just what was advertised, too. A round to the left, really good. Ooh. Terrible landing. Yeah, no, that's, uh, he's gonna have to work on those get-offs, but he looks fine, which is good. Remember, Jesse Petrie's dealt with a lot of injuries throughout his career. But you're still gonna be big numbers on him. There will be no diploma today as Ivy League kicks DeBrito out. Ivy League having a, having a better trip than what he's had of late. He stays a lot closer here. Last few times he's been out there, two, three, finds a spot here. He kind of launches out of there, a little uphill, gets him set back, and then finishes him off. Yeah, you just saw, right? He just kind of gave a shake of his head like, I don't know what <laughs> else I could really have done. really hard right yeah, there. Yeah, what else I could have done? Not really sure. In yeah. terms of that ability to really rise to the occasion. Oh, and it was so close. Roughly six tenths of a second away from breaking the buck off streak. But Cool Whip runs his record to 35 consecutive. Well, you gotta tip your hat to the sheer guts and effort out of Boudreaux Campbell. Cool Whip doing what he does, 45 and a quarter, run of the mill score for him, but Campbell is fighting all the way. He just puts so much stress on his hand that it finally pops out of that bull rope but a great effort right there from Boudreaux Campbell. You can see the fire in his eyes as he walks off, squares his jaw, and can't wait for his next bucking battle opportunity. By the way, six gold buckles sitting there, just chatting away. Adriano Morias, the first to win three. He's in the blue. And of course, the guy in the red, the other and only other three-time PBR world champ, Silvano Alves. Always there, right on the back of the bull. And away we go. Finally flung to the side. He went into self-preservation mode. That's when the touch happened. The clock stopped at 6.25 seconds. Well, and you, when we watch this back, Kaik does a great job to the right, total control. But you watch when this bull jumps out of it and goes back the other way. Kaik thinks he's more behind than what he actually is. It moves too far. He just overrides the bull, mm -hmm. gets ahead of it. Advantage bull. Just right here just goes too far. Just stay right where you're at. Let the bull pack you around. Let him do the work. Well, Pacheco, usually one of the best at showing that patience and waiting for a bull to come back underneath him. How <laughs> Hung up there a bit. The good news is he is finally free and looks injury free, there will be no score, which means Denner Barbosa wins the second bucking battle of his career, going with the one he won in Omaha a couple seasons ago. Barbosa, better than the rest. Castle upset with himself, but you know, this bull lived up to it. You know, didn't kick one jump right there, dropped Castle to the inside. The guys are gonna love to get to see that bull again. They'll they'll get his number. Dinner, what a ride. Your highest mark of the season at 92. Before that out, you told me Smokestack's got a different trip every time. It's hard to make a game plan. How did you use that to your advantage and be standing here in the winner's circle? Uh, 
I know uh, smoke tech sometimes is coming to the left, is coming to the right. I position my rope the same, the same size, uh, put a little bit more to the left. Uh, I, I, I know his problems come to the right today because the last two times he's come to the right. And he did it again. Congratulations. What a ride. Thanks so much. Yeah, he's been struggling with staying on this at least the Beast Series. He won Portland, Oregon. That was a stop on the BT Tour earlier in the season. And Connor's rope broke. What? Yeah, his, the tail of his rope. There you see Keyshawn Whitehorse pulling. He was pulling the rope. The rope actually broke. So, uh, they'll get Connor a new rope. Yo, the crazy, that's the second time there. that's happened this season. Weird to Connor. Weird but, things happening in Albuquerque well, tonight. Well, there you go. All right. Five, four, three, two. He's calling for him. Call Connor. Oh. And going to slam him down. And I don't like the way that he's grabbing that jaw. Oh, I don't either. But. Oh. Yeah, he is in some pain down there. Our sports medicine team. Right there with him. And we're going to watch his replay back right here. And man, Kyler giving it all that he had to try to stay in the middle of this bull. Get Western. Let's watch this here. This bull's horn mighty hit him. Yeah, that was probably what it was on the other side of the angle right there. And there is a look at him as he makes his way up. You can help him a little bit, New Mexico. To 11, 10, 9, let's go. Come on, Chase. Come on, Chase. What a great ride for Chase. So you ride, you get a score, you're pretty much guaranteed to move on to Championship Sunday. I love it. First tack qualified ride of the night. And it's gonna set the pace for the rest of the night. The numbers are in. How about 85 and a half? <laughs> First time. First From Skippy and Linda Johnson. Who can W Ranch? Come on, Eduardo. Let's go. Help him, New Mexico. Chase Doherty in the lead with 85 and a half points. We are awaiting the numbers to come in. How about 88 points? 88! Great ride, Eduardo Aparecido. Left to go for the three-time champ. New Mexico, let's help him, come on! Not much room here. Not yeah, much that, room. Is, that is a bull that he got on a couple of weeks ago in Little Rock, Arkansas. And Woo. Six gold buckles between the two of them. That's right. We have seven gold buckles between the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. Uh. You know, back in the day, Cody Lambert used to travel with Ty Murray, and they had nine gold buckles between the two. <laughs> That's true. 
That is true. I'm here for all the fact. Yeah. This is a Pennsylvania 22-year-old bucket ball rider. Oh! Welcome to the pit. Pookie Holler. Yeah, that bull is the real deal. Brandon McDowell gonna, gonna feel the pain of the Tom Murray Invitational. Pay off that cowboy from Pennsylvania. This is his first time to Albuquerque, so make him welcome. Oh, painful, Scott. Painful. Painful. That's that's more painful than getting a hickey at the flea market in Gallup. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now he has been back in the United States for less than 30 days. Watch him right here. Here we go. Come on, New Mexico. Yep. <laughs> The defending Brazilian national champion, Brazil's Iron Cowboy, and now we've got some drama. Yes, there is. There's some drama. All right, folks, here's what's going on right now. The officials want to make sure that he did not touch this bull with his free arm. You guys know the drill. You cannot touch the bull with any part of your free arm, the bull yourself, the equipment, or the ground. This is a no-brainer, man. This is a no-brainer. Well, I hey, I like where you're at there. And so the decision is in. It is a qualified ride. And pretty good right here. I like Top that. to 86 and a quarter points for the Brazilian champion. Got the fans behind him. JRV, let's go. Give it to him. Mexico, he can hear you. And so there it is. Joao Ricardo Vieta. And the numbers in, not going to take the lead, but 85 and a quarter, 85 and a quarter. Hey. Yo. Clint Scott. Uh-oh. No. Emergency. What? This stick used to have something on the end of it. Oh, Jerry lost his camera. Now it has two somethings on the end. Uh. Look at it. Did you hear the crowd <laughs> like they're paying? <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Is that, is that Jerry? That's Jerry. That's Jerry's, yes. Jerry, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, Jerry, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. The 11th ranked bull rider in the world. Oh, 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 oh he's slow to get up. Heads up, heads up. There you go. Watch him, watch him, watch him. Good job, fellas. Wow, great job by everybody all around. The gate man, everybody. Ooh. So you, PBR Sports Medicine coming in to take care of Denner Barbosa. This is a guy that we watched him break. Yep. That is a long, arduous walk to the top. As Denner Barbosa makes his way, here is the replay. Now watch this. He gets flipped out of there and then hits flat on his back. And I tell you, he can hear you right now, New Mexico. Lift him up, if you will. He sits in the top four of the velocity standings. He's top three in the world of pro rodeo. 
This guy has a chance to get to both finals. Come on, Josh. Watch him go. Holy smokes, that guy is good. He's won the NFR. He's been a reserve PRCA world champion. And Josh Frost is looking to do again at this season what a lot of guys can never pull off in their entire career. That is to qualify for both the national finals and the PBR world finals in the same year. I love it. Awaiting the numbers to come in for Josh Frost. How about 87 and a quarter points? Yeah, he's... He's smooth as Frost Rosin right there. Let me tell you what. I am a fan. Great job, Josh. 23-year-old from Brazil, ready to go. Come on, Langston. Oh. Nope. Nice job, Bo Sheets. How about it, everybody? Give it up for your U.S. Border Patrol Bullfighters. Awesome work right there. That bow don't say a whole lot, but oh, he good. High voltage bullfighting men. Guys, look at that, look at that replay. I hey. know you got a lot going here. Talk to me. She's got a lot going on right here, too. <laughs> Just do your job. Do your job. Let's go. Let's go. Ooh, wow. Look out, look out. Look out, men. He's a new one. I'm coming. I'm right here, <laughs> fellas. I'm right here. Right in the business. Oh, Boom. I'm right here. Bring him to me. Bring him to me. Bring Get down in me. there. Bring him to me. That's high voltage. Bring him to me. I got him. Whoa. Okay, yep. take him away from me. Take him away. <laughs> oh! <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Do, 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 do. <laughs> and kidnapper, Cooper Tires bucket shoot. Let's go, New Mexico. Oh no! Oh, oh man! That is how you do. The pride, the toughness, the grit, the determination for that young man for Utah. How about you give a little bit of love to Keyshawn Whitehorse? And in the replay, and then right there. Wow. Keyshawn, and a live look at him. He has got to put his foot on the gas. Come on, Kaiki, let's go. And Testins Viper, solid numbers, not going to take the lead by any stretch of the imagination, but 84 points, 84, 84 and a half right there for Kaiki Pacheco. And that'll work. He's on the board and in the conversation. Well, if you want to be a legend, you got to wear a gold buckle. Dalton Castle, let's do it.
it back on the replay. Wow, Scott, remember the lead score right now. The score to beat is 88 points. What are the numbers? Dalton Castle, get on up here. 88 and three quarter points. What a great story behind that guy last year and what he did. He just opened eyes around the world and showed everybody in Kansas City that he was an all-star and awaiting the numbers to come in. How about 88 and a quarter points? Been able to accomplish at this level, let's go, Frischlin. Come on, buddy, help him, New Mexico. Now, now, Albuquerque, give it to him. Come on, now. check it out, y'all. And Fritzlin lights out an attack qualified ride. How about 87 and three quarters? Great job, Fritz. Outstanding. All right, Brady. Let's go. Go to work. Go to work. Do your job. He is pumped up. <laughs> Pennsylvania Cowboy, another tech qualified ride. Yeah, solid numbers, not going to take over the lead, but boy, he did do his job, got to eight, and turned in 85 and three quarter points. 85 and three quarters. Brady Randolph. And watch out for that guy tomorrow here. All right, Zeke, let's wrap one. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> He's saying, what time is it? To Ezekiel Mitchell time. Rodeo Thug was the name of the bull. Zeke's dancing his way out of the pit as you get to watch it back. Just get there. How about 83 and three quarter points? Awesome. That'll move him on. Top 12. Outstanding. suspecting and that's exactly what we get solid number 85 and three-quarter points can i just really quick do something yeah sure just before we go to the first sure. we uh he has been ridden the bunch come on flavio get after it help him Whoa.
I love it. Absolutely love it. New Mexico, what did you think about it? Now, now, Scott, the number in so far tonight has been 88 and a quarter. Tonight, Flavio's numbers, what are they? Let's go to 88 and three quarter points for a tie for the number one spot. This is a good matchup for him. Fritzland passes another test, this time aboard Prime Tested. He moves a full bull ahead of everybody else. Yeah, and he's not going to be a ton of points right here, but you can't knock one thing about Fritzland's ride. Yeah, it's, it's textbook perfect from start to finish. I mean, you look at this away from his hand, look how square his shoulders are with the bull. Going forward, when the bull's front end is up, his chest covers it up every jump. That's just a flawless ride. Well, he doctored out of the championship round last weekend because of a groin injury. How about that? Three-time PBR world champ Adriano Marias in attendance, cheering him on. Let's send it back down to Kate. Direction change, forward movement. He really had everything for you. What kind of confidence do you get from a ride like that when you ride so perfect? Just trusting your stuff. Um, at the house, you know, the work you put in, just letting it show here. Do you feel this is the best you've been all season? Do what now? Is this the best you've been all season? It's going to be. It's going to be the best season I've ever had. Well done. Thank you. Craig. I love that answer. Forward thinking, putting it out there that it is absolutely going to be his best season. Mason Taylor, by the way, done for the season. He has decided to go undergo, excuse me, hip surgery to get ready for the upcoming PBR team season. Nobody gets more dialed in than this guy. No problem for Pacheco. It may not be enough to take the overall lead, but it is definitely enough to put him in a position for the win after the championship round. 86 and three quarters. Yeah, good stuff from Pacheco here. And I like, because he was a little bit behind, I like the way he started letting go with his outside leg to help him get back going. And, you know, Kaiki's dealing with a really, really sore riding hand, really banged up thumb on his riding hand. And if I wouldn't have just said that, nobody would yeah. know it. This is a guy, you're never gonna hear him whine, you're never gonna hear him complain. He just gets up, goes to work. Yeah, if there had been a camera in the booth, our fans would have seen me feverishly writing that down on my notes <laughs> because he would never tell anybody that other than you. Meanwhile, it can get out of control. and in 0 0.5 seconds, but for the second time in his career, Alvidrez is able to match speed with speed. 87 and three quarters. Great job too right here. I, I loved when Andrew needed to turn it up, he did. When he needed to hold, he would hold. You know, he, just whatever was needed is what he would do. There was no predetermined plan. It was whatever the bull threw at him, he reacted. Don't you think that's probably the biggest difference between Alvidrez 23 versus previous seasons? Well, yeah, and that's the biggest difference. Anytime you see a guy up at the top of the world standings, that, that is the difference. Right here, he's a good bull, but he is a handful. Out here a few and find a spot. Well, Kaiki rode, so Alves sufficiently motivated to ride his bull. He had it been a while, but that is career 482 as Mr. Nasty goes down. How about 89 and a half? Look at that, Cody Lambert shaking his hand. I mean, that's, that's a great job. Three-time world champ, but 
notice, he never went on the clock in the shoot, right? Right. Fast in the shoot, comes out and makes a great ride. No wasted energy in the shoot because it took everything he had to make that ride. That's just, that's just fun stuff to watch. A guy at this age that's accomplished this much, still working every day to continue to get better and compete at this high level. Thoroughly impresses the other three-time champ, Adriano Marias, and his 89 and a half moves him all the way up to third. We will definitely see Silvano again. Tick-tock. Flavio is finally flung off to the side, but that is definitely a missed opportunity. He will have to be helped by sports medicine, it looks like, but the clock officially says 7.63, and he had Tortuga handled. Yeah, like we've seen with Castle around to the right in the beginning, but then Tortuga gets a little lost here, just trying to trying to shake him off. Not a, not a great day at all for the bull. Hand hangs just a little bit. Maybe getting stepped on a little bit too here. I know he got a little roughed up in the shoot, and then right here it looks like a back leg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that uh, was very clear that his left leg got stepped on. And again, as we thought would happen, sports medicine after the bullfighters were able to make it safe in there. Sports medicine now able to take a look at Flavio. As we always try to do, we will endeavor to bring you up to speed in any revelatory information on Flavio's condition, because keep in mind, with that 88 and three quarters, he would be in the championship round. You know, and, and either way it goes, these fans pay him off big time. Robbie's down early. It is an 0 for 2 weekend for him. But just being able to ride, I think, in front of this crowd yeah. is a stepping stone. Yeah, and you know, he put out a lot of effort. He's just, his upper body was back. A lot of momentum, a lot of whip there, slams him to the ground. But the effort was there. But these three bullfighters, you watch this triangle right here and watch how it converges. This is sweet, Cody Webster. I mean, it like they've just got it covered, man. Yeah, just so good at their job. And we should probably devote a whole segment every show to the bullfighters and just the different angles. That clock is going again. Oh! Brady Randolph just gets tossed like a rag doll. Short circuit made short work of him. Yeah, and, and you watch how many times these guys are getting slammed on their back, belly to the sky, and the amount of work that these bullfighters do. I mean, that is tight right there, and they just do it again. I mean, that's just like what we had showed the previous ride, because Brady Randolph, his hand is gonna hang and this rope that they use long enough to throw him right on his back, belly up. That's just amazing work by those bullfighters. Yeah, if he gets a ride here, he'll be closer to 90 than yes. he will to 83. Oh! It's good to just see him safe, or at least safe-ish as the bullfighters clear the dirt, but clearly Dalton Castle took a blow. And this is just eerily similar to our world number one, Jose Vitor Leme last week, seemingly on his way to a qualified ride. Castle now banged up, but thankfully walking out of the arena on his own accord. Ah, that's a tough dude right there. And look, when you're, we talked about it with other guys, but when you're willing to take it further and further, sometimes this is the outcome because Dalton Castle's in bad shape. He's on the end of his arm right there. There's only one way that that's going to end up, but he's going to see if he can be there one more jump 
That's the price you got to pay. That's the reason Castle's in a real fight for a world title. A lot of times on these buck offs, you see his head pick up really early. My gosh, a little bit like Pukiala we just witnessed, except this just wasn't as bad. Cowtown throwdown brought Moreda over the front end. Yeah, that's a darn good bull right there. You know, it, it, look, I like this because Moreda's in the fight here. You know, this one's trying him, snapping him. He gets too far raised up and stretched out right there. The same, same yeah. exact thing as we've seen with Castle. You get on the end of their your arm and their front feet are still off the ground, something's got to give. It's only his second out. Vastbinder, one of our bigger riders, and it looks as though Hardway was able to use that to his advantage. Once Eli started leaning ever so slightly, momentum went the bull's way. Yeah, and, and we've seen it a lot today, and, and you see it anytime in bull riding. In this sport, it's just one of the things. When a guy starts, when you see their upper body start getting back in their riding arm, they get to the end of it. But these bullfighters, I gotta tell you, Somebody needs to take these guys out and buy them a really great dinner tonight because <laughs> they have just been spot on working their tail off the entire event. Well, I know you are hitting the road. You're driving back home. So I think that was kind of a subtle inference to me. Yes. I mean, you looked at me like, you got I'm all the, the money, guy. the nice clothes. Oh, do I Go now? Go get them something fair nice enough, to fair eat. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> I will second you that the bullfighters do not get paid enough. Drago is indeed a pro. You can see just by the way he's sitting. Boudreaux Campbell just looked good. Drago in his 60th career out allows only his ninth qualified ride. And this may be just what the doctor ordered. 88 and three quarters. Really a good job for Boudreaux. And if you think back to that 15-15 against Cool Whip, Cool Whip got him stretched out. Boudreaux, I thought, did a really good job chasing the front end around on a bull that really wants the guys get get him back. Fantastic ride for Boudreaux. That moves him into a three-way tie for fourth. But we have gotten word that Flavio will be out of the championship round as Adriano Marias can only pass along kudos to the excellent eight seconds that just came from Mr. Campbell. Well, when Sports Med first asked Dalton Castle what hurts, and he said, what doesn't hurt? They first took him to the tent that's right down here by the arena to evaluate him. They then helped him at the 110 stairs to get to sports medicine. I'm being told they're focused on looking at his left knee, but still doing a full evaluation and waiting to see if he's in that championship round, guys. Colton Hevelo needs to work to get there. Oh. Sock monkey tried Hevelo on for size, and the bull liked it a lot. Hevelo, not so much. No, and, and we've gotten to see several examples today of guys getting to the end of their riding arm, their upper body being back, and the result of that. Now, Hevelo come out of this smelling like a rose. And he takes that shot, flips around, still sticks to the landing somehow. Well, and guess what? Off of Kate's report, we are just getting word that Dalton Castle is indeed out of the championship round. So no chance for Castle to move to the number one ranking this weekend. Welcome to another championship round here on Championship Sunday, this time from Elevation in Albuquerque. We'll start with Doherty facing Ivy League. He was left with that bull, but there are a lot of interesting matchups. Partner, I know you've got that pen ready. What are you looking for? Well, I, I mean, I love the rematch with Pacheco, but I think Colton Pritzler picked to win this thing. Uh, you know, he's got about a point lead going on Pacheco. If they both ride their bulls, I think there'll be about a point difference when it all shakes out. And Ivy League reminds Chase Doherty, there are plenty more classes 
he needs to attend as that one only goes 3.3. Well, Ivy League's a darn good bull. And you watch him how hard he kicks out of here and it's moving forward. You'll see a lot of these bulls like the, like the Great Bull Smokestack that Fritzland picked, the number one pick. That bull's gonna be up and down, but he's gonna be right there underneath himself. This bull is traveling forward. That's what increases his difficulty level. Very commonly does the championship round start with a buck off. Yeah, you noted that earlier in the round. Whoa! Legend just threw everything at the Canadian. Webb, are you seeing any flags? Guys, I really think we're going to see a foul right here. There's flags on the ground. Hey, Legend. Hey, Legend. So you heard Webb still trying to coax Legend off the dirt. And he's already mentioned his bullfighting team. It takes a whole team on the dirt sometimes to get these bulls out of there. This is another look at those crazy few seconds. Uh, and this bull is just wild. He wants a guy off his back. Look here, he's just going to try and back up and, and get him off. Now, here will be an interesting thing, Craig, if if because the bull, I think, did go down to his hawks on the back end. But see if Tetz touches him with his free hand before the bull foul occurs. Right here. Boom, there's contact. What happens first? Gosh, you, you so know it looks what? like contact. The I know bull you, hasn't fouled himself yet. I know you don't want to be a judge. But the fact that you called that tiny Tet's touch before it happened, or before the judges, I'm impressed. Well, they can get a clean start on him, get him out of there without him fouling himself, get started off at good time, Josh can do it. Riding solo feels the full effect. Josh Frost just simply blown off his back. 47 and a quarter for that bull score. Biggest score of the year for a bull out. And well deserved. You know, I, I thought riding solo, we talk about him, will he get out without fouling himself? Look at this, just rears out of there and fires. You can't ask one to buck any harder than that right there. That was a spectacular out for riding solo. I tell you what, listening to you walk us through that replay, what I found myself concentrating on is watching all that muscle ripple. I mean, you can just see the power exude off of him. Yeah, they've got him in great shape. Uh, that's, a, that's a phenomenal athlete. And that's going to help the defending Yeti World Champion Bull in his average. He has now moved all the way up to fourth overall, only two one-hundredths of a point behind Flapjack. Well, Solo has a special relationship, guys, with Katie Perschbacher. That's one of Wufa's stock contractors. During Solo's fraternity and classic years, that's his two and four-year-old years, he made a name for himself by Katie Perschbacher flanking him at every out in competition because Cord McCoy was on the road at PBRs. Well, Cord, not here this weekend. He called and asked Katie to flank him, and what did it result in? Some clean outs and, of course, Solo's best mark of the season. Katie told me, I think I might be doing that all season. Uh, I think uh, Cord yeah, that, should want her to do yeah, it all season, right? I would answer it for me. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, Bandito Bug has bucked off 18 in a row. Make it 19. I was just going to say, oh, gosh. Alvidrez, the latest to not just feel the bull power, but the bull wrath. Yeah, and over the head. You know, we've seen so many so of these many. guys getting run back, catching this kick. And now Vidrez has already, had already went two hands down right there. You know, he's trying to just get out of this thing. Bull sets up, changes it up over his head. Now he just can't get out of the way. Bull's trying to leave. And yeah, yeah th there's definitely something in the air, right? Because we have seen the bull power, but we've also seen kind of this menacing side of where a lot of riders are dealing with aftermath we don't normally watch. 
Well, Solo has a special relationship, guys, with Katie Perschbacher. That's one of Wupa's stock contractors. During Solo's fraternity and classic years, that's his two and four year old years, he made a name for himself by Katie Perschbacher flanking him at every out in competition because Cord McCoy was on the road at PBRs. Well, Cord, not here this weekend. He called and asked Katie to flank him, and what did it result in? Some clean outs, and of course, Solo's best mark of the season. Katie told me, I think I might be doing that all season. Uh, I think uh, Cord yeah, should want her to do it all season, right? That would answer it for me. <laughs> She's smiling because a job well done, of course. And yeah, if I was Cord McCoy right about now, I'd be drawing up the official contracts. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> we talked about, right, Sage and Stetson and Josh having power in the team draft. I think Katie just got some power of her own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk Boudreaux Campbell. He had a very solid pick in this draft. He went with kind of the relative unknown out of all these bulls, Domino. Yeah, and, and look, this is a bull that, yeah, we don't, we haven't seen a lot on tour, but the guys did see some last year. Uh, and Campbell has seen enough out of him that he knew that was the one he wanted. Because like you said, he was down there low. He had, a, he had the pick of a lot of different bulls. Really like this one. Look, I love where Campbell's at right now, mentally and physically, putting in the work during the week. Mentally, he knows what he wants to get out of this sport. So he he is uh, he's really competing well right now. No, absolutely. And just to add to that, he, you know, he came into the weekend sixth in the world standings. Oh! And the latest bull to bring a rider over the front end and give him a parting gift is Domino. I mean, you've been to a lot of bull riding events, Mac. You have taken part in a lot of competitions. Have you ever seen so many riders come over the front end at a single event? You know, we had a, we had a pretty gruesome event in Fort Worth a long, long time ago where a lot of guys were getting banged up. But I don't know, like you said, of the same type of thing happening, guys being jerked down like that right there. I don't know that I've ever seen it happen so much in, in one event. That will make anyone who has an interest in bull riding rethink a career in this sport because as sports medicine makes sure Boudreaux's okay, this is Marcus Mast, Alakazam. Alakazam didn't need to throw much magic mass way because that one is over at one and a half. Well, and you called it when you seen what the re-ride was for Mass. These two on paper just didn't match up well. And you watch it back on the Can-Am cam, and he's beat the first jump. You know, like the first move Alakazam has him beat. Alakazam continues an impressive bovine run through this championship round and also continues the streak of riders needing to see sports medicine. Colton Fritzland, one of two humans. And then there are also two bulls that still have to go to work before we decide our winner here in Albuquerque. Very simple, if Pacheco rides, the pressure falls on Colton Fritzland. The clock shows eight, but just like you said was a possibility. It took a long time, yeah. but that contact came, and the judges are definitely going to take another look. Yeah, and, and look, and this bull is trying Pacheco the entire time. Yeah. You look at this. I mean, this thing is leaping in the air, front end, forward movement, and you can see it coming. Guy, he's getting reared back. He's to his fingertips, and he is not quitting on it. Ah. Alan Jordan, I tell you what. No qualified ride as the contact happens. Six one hundredths of a second early. Colton Fritzland, without even leaving the shoot, is your champion. That. It is a buck off. So for back-to-back -back weeks, 
The Bulls not only are better, but they blank the best riders in the world. Credit Colton Frisland because he did find the W in the queue. Yeah, he's, he's upset with his performance right there in that moment. But as you said, congratulations goes out to him. Made a couple of really good rides to put himself in that situation. Uh, look, I've won events like that before. Yeah, it doesn't feel great at the time. Well done getting the congratulations from Ty Murray and uh, your second win in your career, but first time here in the pit. This crowd nodding your head in this environment. What do you make of staying in the winner's circle here? This is legendary here. Y'all, tip your hats to y'all. Y'all are best fans that guy could ask for and uh, made me ride, so thank y'all. You can't ask for any better congratulations than that. Well done. And Ty, since you're here, I want to move to you as well. You've seen so many careers get started and launched from your event right here. So let's talk about Colton Fritzland and what he was able to accomplish. What do you make of what he's doing this season? Well, you know, this is a very talented young guy coming up. And, you know, this is our 26th year, and I don't think I've ever seen Bulls this rank anywhere. And they just keep getting bigger and ranker and stronger. And this is a a young guy that's won a that's won a bull riding here. In my opinion, there ain't one that's any harder to, to win than this one, and and that speaks to the uh, talent that he's got and the future that's ahead of him. Ty and Oakley, thank you so much, and Colton, huge congratulations, well deserved. Thank you, ma'am. Colton Fritzlin entered an elite club when he came to the PBR and he won his first event ever. It had been a drought that lasted two years, but it is over now. Taking a look at our world standings, Pacheco has moved into second overall by a mere six points ahead of Dalton Castle. For now, Jose Vitor Leme is still our world number one. Join us for another full day of bull riding next Sunday as the Bulls stampede into Sioux Falls. First, you can tune into the 15-15 bucking battle. That'll be at 12 Eastern on CBS. Then at 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on CBS Sports Network, we'll bring you Championship Sunday. For Justin McBride, Kate Harrison, Cody Webster, and our entire PBR crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.